Hey everyone, uh, yeah, I wanted to pop on and maybe give a little bit of a a walkthrough breakdown of how I made this VHS menu in a couple of days and then spent a couple of days of polish um, and, you know, doing a fun thing like this little VHS pop-out that was something that um, I was thinking about and how do I go about a project like this, how do I set it up? and what i did to make it in spoilers it's basically materials and material functions that handle nearly everything and i just reuse those functions over and over again um but wanted to walk through the process the setup here some of the interesting things um it will probably be a multi-part video series because i don't really like to record too long and uh so we'll get kicked off i guess i'll start the camera and we can get to it. So I'll start where I started, which uh, actually was this test dummy that we can kind of see this widget. Um, I started by trying to make the Sony um, VHS tape. So this was kind of the first inspiration style guide. And I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is the way that I'm going to make this work. This totally seems to work for me. So you can see my inspiration, what I'm going for. And this is kind of the first, I guess you would equate it to a vertical slice. This is the first proof of concept and the style, the visuals and what I was going for and putting that all together. So um, that's what I did first. But when I did this, the very first thing I actually made was the material, the material function, and then reuse that function to basically make the style across everything. And that sort of proved out where I was going and how it was going to work. So let's get into the very first material. And that would be in our lovely material folder. And under this one, the very first material was this Sony T120 material. And so I'll just kind of make this a little bit larger in the focus. Um, so this ended up being the final material. Now I'd ignore this top part. It's not really that necessary. We'll discuss it later, probably when I discuss how I did the little peaking VHS jackets uh, that you can grab the VHS from. That's how they physically grabbed it up. That's what this top stuff is. That's really not much. The core crux of the material is this material function that I used. Um, I helped, I kind of defined this the very first, this was the first material. I decided this is the style that I wanted to use. I converted it to a material function. And then I basically reused this function everywhere to get the look and the feel and the style. So it's used again here. And there's one other material function that is heavily used, which is this outline border one, which then kind of gives me this border around here. But let's turn that off because it's a little distracting. And let's also turn off the visual style, um, all the stepped stuff. So you can see what that is like without any of the style and how basic uh, this really ends up looking like and becoming. So we're just going to replace these UVs with the standard UVs. Um, and this was the very first material. It's a little desaturated. It's got some fun things with it, but essentially it is a gradient. It's a gradient that has a pattern offset and a pattern scale. Those, those two kind of parameters. I run it through a, um, curve atlas, uh, with my own curve and my curve were the Sony colors. So these are the colors that are, you know, basically on the actual uh, Sony um, VHS cover. So basically just color pick those right off. Ooh, didn't mean to close that window. Don't you love it when you do that? Here we go. So that's basically that. And then I made an offsets version. So this one essentially is just adding like 0.005 to the height. Now we can't see because we're not comparing them together, but I basically made like a really subtle blend here. Um, and that sort of blends these two different curve, the same actually curve atlas together, but with a slight offset to give that painterly kind of look. Um, then I have some noise here. 
this is totally unnecessary and they didn't end up using a lot of this in the style um making this like pixelated kind of noise happening it's more my style but i didn't end up needing it um to get this look then we created a little mask here that will then give us the inside area if i put on the border we can see it's going to mask out that inside area and then lerp that with the page color and voila we essentially have the very first thing which is basically getting this gradient to span across the entire page and have um colors easy easy peasy now what makes it unique is the this displacement um function so this displacement function is essentially just a really simple toy uh noise texture this texture is just a random noise texture that i downloaded um from i think a vfx texture generator it's not even that fancy just looks like that pretty basic all we're doing is we are running it through stepped time so step time is where you can um you can essentially if we preview this it's stepping uh the time so the time's not smoothly interpolating it's going at a certain frame rate you could think of it as like old timey cartoons. So this is going at three frames per second right now. It's essentially just um, panning and appending on the X axis. So it's moving across the X axis, animating across the X at three frames per second. Um, and if I were to increase the step time, then it will increase the time there. So if I stop previewing that, I essentially lerp that with the original UVs and put in a displacement amount. And I'm using fun things like mip maps here to kind of blur the texture a bit more. A little unnecessary. Um, and then it turns out with font materials, you can't use anything that has texture mip maps. So this is a version that doesn't use mips. And then some random here, but we we can that's again, I barely use this. This is not really that important. Instead, the real important is like producing outputs for step time, the displacement amount, the um, texture itself. Sometimes I need to use the texture and not the UVs um, and all the materials. And it's just essentially, this is the entire style guide of the whole thing is basically this. <laughs> Everything is this function, just modifying the parameters uh, and animating them and doing stuff. The whole entire thing is that. So if we go back to here, guess what? Each one of these widgets, if we go into the widget itself, each one of these widgets has... Um, so this is the font material. Guess what? The font material is using this VHS displacement. And another texture, the same texture, in fact, the same one, um, doing a little bit of stuff to make it more papery and then to wobble it, I'm using screen position and offsetting it, uh, there. But that's all the font material is. So if we go here, exactly the same material function is styling this. Guess what? This material up here, I go into this. Well, this one's a little bit more complicated because I'm drawing all the circles. But guess what? It's all using the exact same function. That same function is applying to the circles and making them all wobble. Um, so this is basically drawing a grid of circles. If we preview this, this is drawing my grid of circles. Now this is the math to make sure that it maintains the aspect ratio. So if I were to, if I were to, you know, draw it, the circles stay the same. If I don't do that and I just use standard, um, standard UVs, it will, uh, it will essentially um, warp these, which we could put in right now and show you. So if I swap that, and it will also get rid of the styling. And uh, yeah, look at that. Although we didn't multiply by the amount, so that would help. Let's let's do a more realistic uh, demo here of what it would look like. Oh, that's one. I would need a frack after this. Here we go. Nobody look at these these uh lovely 
So that's essentially what it is without the scaling, which that's what this is doing. This is keeping the aspect ratio this, so the circle can scale properly to the size of the container, so it's not squashing and stretching it. And this displacement uh, styling. So I just swap that back in. And guess what? Now it looks like the style that I have going on. And that's the ultimate trick of this whole VHS thing is I'm using two material functions to essentially style everything. Um, and these are just fun little masks that help mask out the, the S part of the Sony, um, uh, the Sony logo here. So you've got here, it's a lovely um, seven by eight grid with some of the S kind of clipped out and I have that replicated here. So with that in mind, figuring out the style and then applying that, and again, exactly the same concept here. If I go to this texture, this is to scale the texture size by the texture, um, using the size and the container so that it always maintains its, um, its size. Uh, this is all in the material lab, which should be available for anyone to kind of pull these nodes. But again, this material function, this displacement function is the thing that just animates the whole thing. The logo itself is pretty darn boring. It's just the VHS logo as a PNG. Really nothing fancy here. Um, but that material function is the thing that's actually driving this entire style. So after I had created the style, I had proved it out kind of with this concept. Um, then I went on to make all these other kinds of materials based on other VHS jackets. I made other uh, things. So if we go into kind of our standalone jacket here, I like made it more reminiscent to the jacket, placed the text, um, you know, did a lot of that work to make it look similar and again that little notch that i was describing making that notch was a, a fun thing and then how all this animates so all so all of this animates open and closed in the final setting um so yeah i think that's where we'll end it for today and in the next video we'll probably go into uh the next thing that i made which was the um which was the second jacket and taking that material concept further. Um, so we'll probably go through all the materials and I'll go through all the widgets and how I set them up, how I made it. Uh, and again, the end product ends up being this nifty fully stacked game menu. And if I were to take it further, I'd probably design even more jackets, um, more uh, end VHS tapes and stickers. Uh, but that's about it for me on this one. We'll keep these videos short to not overload on content and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Talk to you later.